Now we're going to be installing a bypass track system. As you can see on our demo, we have casing around the window. For this exercise, we will be removing the casing and mounting the panels and the frame around the window itself. As you can see below here, we have our frames laid out. We're going to be showing you the use of the nail gun and the drill. Also, we have our hardware laid out. It's always a good idea to keep that hardware handy and close by for easy access. Now that we have our box out frame laid out and on a smooth hard surface, we're going to go ahead and assemble the box out header to the box out leg. We will do this by use of a screw. First we'll put the header and the box out leg together making sure that the front is flush and the sides are flush. Then what we'll do is we'll take our drill and we'll pre-drill a hole all the way through all the way through the header and the leg. Next, we'll insert the screw into the pre-drilled hole and fasten it to the header and the leg. Now, with the header and the leg flush, we can do the bottom. We'll go ahead and insert the drill and pre-drill another hole. Now that the hole is pre-drilled, we can insert the other screw. Once the screw is inserted, we double check to make sure it's flush on both sides. And that's how we would install the header to the box out leg. Earlier we showed you how to fasten the box out header to the box out leg by countersinking using a screw. Now we're going to be showing you how to fasten the box out header to the box out leg using a nail gun with two and a half inch nails. We'll bring the box out leg to the box out header again making sure that it's flush on the side and flush on the top we can nail this together three maybe four nails are recommended to do this now that you've seen both methods of fastening the box out header to the box out leg Norman shutters strongly suggest the use of the screw again countersinking putting the screw in both top and bottom. Now with the frame completely assembled, we'll go ahead and place the frame on the wall. This will be done by simply picking up the frame in the middle and walking it to the wall. Now that we have our frame assembled and at the window, we're going to show you two methods of installation. First will be with the nail gun. Second will be pre-drilling and using a trim head screw. Let's go ahead and start with the left. First what we'll do is we'll take our frame and we'll center it on the window. Note, there's even space on both sides. Make sure your frame is evenly positioned around the window and nail it to the wall. Make sure that when, you nail, that when you nail this to the wall, that you're angled back a little bit so that the nail will not only go through the wall, but into the stud. Once that is in position, we can move now to the right side. Now that we fasten the left side to the wall, let's fasten the right. For this exercise, we're going to be using a trim head screw and a countersink. We'll start by pre-drilling a hole for the screw making sure that we angle back through the frame into the wall 
and into the stud. Now that the hole is drilled, we can install our screw. Now our screw is installed and countersunk. Now that we have the left side of the box out fastened and secured to the wall, and the right side of the box out fastened and secured to the wall, let's make the header straight across the top. The way to do this is take a measurement from the bottom of the header to the top of the window. And from the bottom of the header to the top of the window on both sides. For example, if we have one eighth of an inch difference here and one quarter of an inch difference here, half of that would be 3 sixteenths. So we would move the frame up 3 sixteenths of an inch and mark the wall. Now, when we go up to put our support bracket up here, we know where to go to. Next, we'll use our support bracket. We use our support bracket by installing the small screw into the header and the larger screw into the wall. Let's do that now. First what we'll do is we'll install the smaller screw into the header. With our screws in place, we can now raise our frame to the line that we made on the wall to straighten out the header and insert the screw into the support bracket. Note we use the longer screw so that the screw goes through the drywall and into the stud. Now that we've fully installed the support bracket and the header is straight, we'll go ahead and put the panels in. Quick note to remember is that there is a back panel and a front panel. If you notice below here, we have two different types of track on the front and on the back. This is the back panel. It will have the track system for the panels on the front. The back panel will have the track system on the back. Let's look at this. We'll go ahead and install the back panel now. Taking the back panel to the window, we will place it in the opening. Next, we'll move all of the rollers out of the way and only have the one we're going to be working with in front of us. First, we'll install the roller into the top of the frame and secure it. Next, we'll install the second roller into the top of the panel and secure it. Now that we have the back panel installed, let's install the front panel. Please note here on the back panel that the track system is on the front. And on the front panel, the tracking system would be on the back. The back panel accepts the front panel. Let's place the front panel on the back panel. Bring our rollers over and install them. Making sure down below that our track system is engaged with each other. As you can see, the panels are attached to the rollers securely. And each of the corners on the left and on the right are up against the frame. We can now look at how uneven the panels are. Let's fix that. The way to fix that would be by using the track wrench supplied in your hardware box. Simply place the track wrench on the screw and adjust. The 
adjustment can be made up or down on the panel until the panels are even vertically. Now that we have our panels even in the middle vertically, we can bring the legs to the panel. Let's start by closing the panel and tapping the legs over to the panel. Once the panel is up against the leg evenly, we can secure it to the wall. Simply move the panel out of the way and nail it to the wall in the middle. Then we'll check it. Seeing that it's even in the middle, we can move down below. Again, we'll move the panel out of the way and holding the frame to the wall securely, we'll nail the bottom and check it. Now that the frame is nailed evenly to the panel against the wall, we can do the right side. On the right, we'll do the same. And as you remember, the right side will be using the trim head screw. So let's go ahead and pre-drill the holes for the trim head screw and install those. Now that the left side of the box out is fully secured to the wall and even with the panel, at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom, we can now secure the right side fully. We'll simply bring the panel over to the frame and gently tap it until it's even. Now that it's even to the frame, we can install our trim head screws. First, we'll move the panel away from the window and the frame and place our drill at the point where we're going to be make, putting in the trim head screw. We want to have a drill bit long enough to go through the frame, through the drywall, and into the stud. Now that that's complete, we can install our trim head screw. Now that the trim head screw is installed and countersunk, we can bring the panel to the frame and check the bottom, making sure that the panel is even with the frame. Now that the middle is secure, let's do the bottom. Again, we'll pre-drill through the frame, through the drywall, and into the stud. And now we can insert our screw. Again, making sure we countersink that screw. Now that it's all installed and the leg is fastened to the wall and even with the panel, we're ready for our fascia. Now that the left and the right box out frames are fully installed and the panels are even to the legs, we can install the fascia. You'll notice that on both of the box out legs, there's a notch. This notch is so that the top fascia rests on top. Next, we want to make sure that the back of the miter is even with the side of the frame. Once that is accomplished, we can go ahead and nail our fascia to our header. Note where we nail the fascia. The nail is in the third bead from the top of the fascia that is directly in line with the header. And we'll continue this all the way down. The front fascia is completely installed, we can install the returns. For this exercise, we purposely cut the return short. The reason for this, because we want you to know that if you're mounting a round molding, you will need to order the returns with the length of that molding. Now we can go ahead and install. Again, we 
we're going to be placing each one of the nail holes into the bead even with our header. Now that the return is installed, you may have to nail the bottom of the front fascia to the leg. To do this, you simply measure 3 eighths of an inch from the outside of the leg to the inside and make a small mark that will line you up in the bead here with the center of that leg. I just Now that we've made the mark here, we can nail perpendicular to that mark in the bead here we will have secured the fascia to the middle of the leg. And now we can move to the right return and secure it the same way. We simply place the right return up against the miter and nail it to our fascia. We can measure 3 eighths of an inch over the outside of the leg to the fascia and nail that. Being perpendicular to the line, we'll nail right in the center of the bead. Now the installation is complete. Now, if there's a little bit of a gap between your return and your front fascia, you can run a little bead of caulking in there. with a wet rag, simply fill that bead and that will make it turn out real nice. Now if the bottom floor guide is going to be used, it will be placed in the slot underneath the back panel in the U-channel. First what we'll do is we'll slide the guide into that slot. Now we'll make sure we're perpendicularly even vertically. Then we'll install the bottom floor guide. The reason that we've chosen to put it in the back panel is now when you slide it back over and you're going to be using the front panel to go in and out of the window, that guide will be hidden. Now that that's installed and your shutters are lined up vertically, fascia is installed, the legs are secured to the wall, panels are flush to the legs, the installation of your closed bypass shutter is complete.